guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to be teaching you how to play I Won't Back Down by Tom Petty. For the basics of this song, you will just need a guitar and standing tuning and you won't need a capo. If you want to master your chords back to front, then head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve in guitar in general, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Alright, let's jump into the lesson. Okay, so I'm going to start by teaching you all the rhythm parts and in the later part of this video I'll teach you all the lead guitar parts. Okay, so let's start with the intro which is really nice and easy. There's just three chords here, really nice and simple. We have an E minor chord, so we'll play that with our index and middle finger here on the second frets of the fifth and fourth string. And then we'll go to a D and then a G. Now those three chords will be played in one strumming pattern that is two bars long. Now we're going to be constantly strumming with down strums at eighth notes. So one and two and three and four and. And we'll be doing that for two bars. Now we're going to change from the E minor to the D on the three beat. And then we're going to change from the D to the G on the end beat after the four. So this is on an up beat. If we put that all together, the two bars of music will sound like this. One and two. Now one other thing we'll do to add a bit more dynamic is to palm mute these down strums. So take the fleshy bit of your palm here and rest it on the edge of the bridge here. Not too far in, otherwise nothing will ring out. It needs to be right on the edge. And we'll only focus on our top two or three bass notes of each chord. So for the E minor and the G, that's the sixth and fifth string. And for the D chord, we'll just focus on the fourth and third string. So we add the palm muting and the intro will just sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and remember that G changes on the end beat after the four. So we're just going to play that through twice for the intro. Next we get to the verse chords which is three lines of chords. So the first line of chords is just the same as the intro, the E minor, D and G. For the second line of chords we have an E minor, D and C chord but our C chord is now going to be starting on the one beat. So we have E minor for half a bar, D for half a bar, and C for a full bar. And this is all palm muted as well. So the second line of chords, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. And then the third line of chords is the same as the first line of chords. So the verse in total will sound like this. So that's it for the verse. Now in the studio recording, in the first verse, that C chord starts on the one beat. Now in the second verse, that C chord actually shifts and it changes on the end beat after the four in a similar way to the G. To keep things simple, we're just going to change to that C chord on the one beat for the entire song. But I just wanted to note that in the studio recording, in the first verse, it changes on the one beat. In the second verse and in the solo section, it changes on the end beat after the four on the upbeat. So that's it for the verse. We move on to the pre-chorus and we just have one line of chords here. We start with our E minor, D and G in the same way that we did with our verse, but then we have three chords at the end here. We have our C and then we go to a G and back to our C. Now one thing we'll do is we'll actually play our G chord like this as well with our ring and middle finger and pinky finger if you want to. Although we are only focusing on the bass notes of these chords so you can just be lazy and play these top two strings. The reason why we'll play the G like this is because our transition from the C to the G and back to the C will be a lot easier because we'll just be shifting these two fingers up and down strings like this. So the first section is the same. So we go one and two and three and four and one and two and... But when we get to the three beat, we'll go to our C and then on the end beat after the three, we'll go back to our G and then we'll do a muted strum. Now that muted strum is more or less a down strum but we're going to use the side of our palm to touch the strings 
as we go for that mute. Now this is a little different to a palm mute because a palm mute we're right on the edge. For the muted strum we are a little bit further in. So we're gonna go C, G, muted strum and then back to our C chord with an up strum because for the chorus we're then going to transition to a constant down up strumming pattern as opposed to all down strums. So from the three beat, three and four and and all together the pre-chorus. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and... Now for that G chord, we slowly open up that G chord as it builds up. In the verses, we're palm muting constantly, but in this pre-chorus, we open it up. So again, with this pre-chorus, which is one of the trickier parts of this song, one, So playing that C chord on the end beat after the four on the up strum in that pre-chorus just takes us to our chorus and we're going to hold on to this C and now our strumming pattern is a continuous down up down up motion as opposed to all down strums. So we're going to continue on with our C with a down up down up down on the up strum on the end beat after the three we'll then go to our G chord. Now I'm going to play my regular G chord again. You can use the lazy G chord if you want to, but I like this G chord because it, then transitioning to the D is a bit simpler in my opinion. So we're gonna to go to our G on the up strum, a muted strum after that, and then go to our D with the up strum on the end beat after the four. So that's it for the first bar. Down, up, down, up, down, up, mute, up. And then we're gonna continue on with this D chord for the next bar. And we have chord changes that are similar in this second bar. So we're gonna continue with this D with a down, up, down, up, down. But then we're gonna go back to our G on the end beat after the three. A mute on the four and then go to a C on the up strum after the four. So the second bar. One and two and three and four and. So take this really slow. Now, if that muted down strum is too hard for you, then just play a regular down strum. But all together for this first line of chords. Now that line of chords is repeated through twice. Now for our second line of chords, it's almost the same, but for our second bar, we just continue on with this D chord continuously for a full bar with down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So the second line of chords. And then for our third line of chords, we have our E minor and D and G. And we basically return to the palm muting in the same timing that we had for the verse. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And that line of chords is played through twice. So I'm gonna play the pre-chorus and the chorus in total now because they do blend in together. That C chord at the very end of the pre-chorus blends right into the start of the chorus. So all together. So that's it for the chorus. Now notice as I'm playing that chorus, for the first two lines of chords, my hand is just continuously going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, just like a pendulum motion. Even when I'm doing a muted strum, that's still a down strum technically, and that allows me to then position myself to go with the next up strum. And it's constantly keeping motion. So be sure to have a steady rhythm hand there. Now for the solo section, we're basically playing the verse chords and then the pre-chorus again. So nothing new to learn there, we've already learned those parts. Now for chorus three, it's a little bit different to the chorus one and chorus two. For the third line of chords, instead of playing the regular E minor, D to G, 
we're basically playing the pre-chorus chords there for that third line of chords because then that takes us to chorus four and chorus four is the same as chorus one and chorus two except that last line of chords is played through three times so there's a few variations here and there throughout the song but if you just play along with the playthrough at the end of this lesson then you'll be able to figure it all out and piece it all together so those are all the rhythm parts for this song okay so now i'm going to teach you all the electric lead guitar parts i'm going to teach you two different ways of playing the lead guitar the first method is without a slide and in standard tuning and the second method will be more close to the actual studio recording where we'll require our guitar in open G tuning and we'll use a slide. So let's start with the easier version, assuming that you don't have a slide and you just wanna play in standard tuning. Now in terms of the tone, I'm just using a clean amp and I have an overdrive pedal and some reverb. So a pretty simple tone there and I'm using my bridge pickup. So let's start with the intro. So for the first lick, we're just going to go from the 10th fret of the second string with our ring finger, hit that and slide up to the 12th fret. And then we hold that out for two and a half bars. The second lick's quite simple. We're just going to hit this 12th fret and slide back to 10th and then hit the eighth fret of the second string twice. So the intro. Next, we get to the main solo. So we're gonna start by hitting the 10th fret of the first string and sliding up to the 12th fret there. So we're gonna hold that out for quite some time. And then for the next lick, we go to the 12th fret of the second string, hit that and slide down to the 10th, and then go to the eighth fret. So two plucks there, that one with a slide down, and then the eighth fret. So. Then for the next lick, we'll go to the seventh fret of the third string with our ring finger, hit that, and slide down to fourth, and then slide up to ninth, so. So that's it for the first line of tab, which sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Now for the second line of tab, we're gonna to go to the 12th fret of the third string, hit that, hold that out for a bit. And then for our next lick, we'll go to the 10th fret of the second string, hit that and slide up to 12th. And then with our index finger, hit the 10th fret of the first string and then back to the 12th fret of the second string. So this lick. For the next lick after that, we'll go to the 7th fret of the 4th string, slide up to the 9th, and then hit the 7th fret of the 3rd string. So just two plucks there. And for this final section, we're going to go back to that 9th fret of the 4th string, hit it and quickly slide down to the 7th. And then go to the 5th fret of the 4th string, then go to the seventh fret of the fifth string, hit that and slide down to fifth fret. And then we end with the third fret of the sixth string. That the next finger. So that final section. And together with the little lick before that. And that's it for this solo in total, which sounds like this. So now I'm gonna teach you how to play the lead guitar with a slide and we'll need to get into open G tuning in order to do so. So to get into open G, our lower sixth string will need to go down to a D. So we'll sound like that. Then our A string will need to go down two semitones to a G. So we'll go A down to G sharp, down to a G, sounds like that. And then the final string we need to detune is our high E string. So that will go from a high E down, down to a D. It sounds like that. So open G tuning is D, G, D, G, B, and D. Okay, so let's start with the intro. Now I'm using a slide here on my ring finger. Some people like using their pinky finger, but I personally like using my ring finger. So we're going to start at the 10th fret of the second string. And we're gonna pluck the string and slide up to 12. 
Now the key here to using the slide is that if I say 10th fret, which is here, you want the contact of your slide to be right on top of the fret strip dividing 10th and 11th fret. So right above the fret strip and that will get the right pitch. If you go too far down or too far up, your note's gonna be out of tune. So it needs to be right on top of the fret strip. And when you go up to the 12th, it will be the fret strip dividing 12th and 13th fret. And once you're up at that pitch, you can then move your slide back and forth in order to get that vibrato. And then for our second little lick, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use my middle finger here. So I'm gonna use my middle finger to pluck this second string. We're gonna slide down to the 10, and then I'm gonna quickly put my middle finger back onto the string so it mutes it. Hit it, slide down, and then mute. And then I'm gonna take my slide back to the 12th fret and hit the third string twice. So the second lick. And that's it for the intro, which sounds like this. Okay, so now let's get to the solo. We're going to hit the second string and slide up to the 17th fret. So you can do that from the 15th. Now remember when you go to the 17th fret, you wanna be placing that slide above the fret strip dividing 17th and 18th. So. And then we're gonna go back down to this 12th fret. We're gonna pluck this second string and I'm gonna use my middle finger here again and slide down to 10 and then mute it with my middle finger. So pluck it and then make contact. And then back to 12th fret and we're gonna pluck the third string. So just two plucks there. Then we're gonna to go to the seventh fret. So fret strip dividing seventh and eighth. Pluck the third string here. Down to 14th and up to ninth. So. So that's it for the first line of tab, which sounds like this. Now for the second line of tab, we'll hit that ninth fret on the third string and slide up to 12th. And then for our next lick, we're gonna hit the 10th fret of the second string, slide up to 12th. And then with our slide already here, we'll pluck the first string and back to second string. Now your slide will need to keep contact with both those strings at the same time. And then for the final lick, we'll go down to the second fret of the third string. You'll hit that and go up to the fourth. And then lift your slide momentarily and hit the open first string. So. And then slide will come back down, hit the fourth fret of the third string, slide down to second, lift the slide, hit the open third string, and so far. Hit the third fret of the fourth string, hit that and slide down to second fret, and then lift your slide and hit the fifth string. So that's it for this full lick, which sounds like this. And the solo in total. So now I'm going to be doing a full playthrough of the song and of the vocal track on top for some context. Big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to this playthrough. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you want to grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzerotohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.